Hello everyone and welcome to In His Time with Father Mike, Chapter 5, Time and Eternity. St. Augustine in his Confessions wrote, What then is time? I know well enough what it is, provided that nobody asks me. But if I am asked what it is and try to explain it, I am baffled. Week after week, as countless Christians throughout the world come together to worship God, they make their profession of faith as they join in the words of the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is the most wisely, widely and used statement of faith in all Christendom. It's the closest thing we have to a national anthem. And over the years, the Nicene Creed has remained the universal, global, doctrinal statement of Christian, biblical Christianity and belief. As we say the Creed together, we are affirming the historical, non-negotiable and eternal truths of the Christian Gospel, as it has been passed down through the ages. As Christ's brothers and sisters gather in so many different contexts and places, we are united in our common faith, which we proclaim in unity with one another, as members together of the body of Christ. The creed begins, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. It was not long after the Nicene Creed was first adopted that St. Augustine wrote his spiritual autobiography entitled Confessions. Heralded as one of the great masterpieces of all Western literature, Confessions was written between 397 and 400 AD, when Augustine was in his mid-forties. Book six of Confessions, translated by Henry Chadwick, contains Augustine's thoughts and questions on time and eternity. He opens with the words, Lord, eternity is yours, so you cannot be ignorant of what I tell you. Asking what is time, St. Augustine acknowledges that the answer is difficult and cannot be understood without God's help. He admits, I confess to you, Lord, that I still do not know what time is, and I further confess to you, Lord, that as I say this, I know myself to be conditioned by time. We human beings are indeed conditioned by time. God is not. In our limited thinking, we measure periods of time as long or short. We use phrases like, that was quick, or this is taking a long time. But God tells us from his perspective of eternity, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 8, my thoughts are not your thoughts. We may think that a poem we are reading is a long one. Augustine asks, compared to what? What makes us think it is a long poem? A short line of a poem read slowly may take longer to read than a long line read faster. Our measurement of time can be arbitrary and it is often dependent on our mood. We tend to measure time in the three tenses, past, present and future. God is eternal, unchanging and ever-present. He holds all time in his hands while remaining above the limits of time. Augustine confesses, before all times you are eternal creator of all time. God is timeless and dwells in eternity outside our human notions of past, present and future. Indeed, before God created the world, there was no such thing as time. As an example of how our thinking about time differs from God's, let's consider the story of the golden calf found in Exodus chapter 32. I am grateful to Dr. James Houston, one of the founding fathers of Regent College in Vancouver, for some of the insights here. At God's command, Moses had gone up on Mount Sinai to receive the commandments. The glory of God, we are told, appeared like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain, and Moses entered the cloud and was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. In the meantime, God's people down below were growing impatient with the length of time Moses was spending up there. Their impatience led to the sin of idolatry, causing them to break God's covenant with them. Exodus chapter 32 verse 1 reads, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, 
the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods that will go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. In response to their demand, Aaron made a golden calf from the earrings belonging to the women and children. The people then declared the calf a god. This action was a clear violation of the words the Lord had given Moses to tell the people in Exodus chapter 20, verse 22, which reads, You have seen for yourselves that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make gods of silver to be with me, nor shall you make for yourself gods of gold. How did the God of Israel perceive all that was going on at the foot of the mountain? While Moses was still up there in the cloud of God's presence, God spoke to him and said in verses 7 and 8 of Exodus chapter 32, Go down, for your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it. How different God's perception of time was. The people of Israel grew impatient because they thought that Moses was taking too long to come down from the mountain. But from God's point of view, the people of Israel had turned away quickly in their rejection of him and his servant Moses. What seemed like a long time to the people was no time at all to God. The Apostle Peter tells us, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you. Time often surprises us, either by the length of time things take or how quickly it can fly. I remember hearing an elderly gentleman once remark that aging is when the days drag on but the years fly by. Christian apologist C.S. Lewis sees our surprise at the passing and constraints of time as evidence that we were made for eternity. He says that a fish is not surprised at being wet since that is its natural condition and environment. Eternity is the natural environment for which we were made. The author of the book of Ecclesiastes declare that God has put eternity into man's heart. For us, life is spent in a series of moments at various periods of time. The reality is that all our life events and circumstances are lived out against the backdrop of eternity if we could but see it. Nothing is random or meaningless. Nothing is wasted. Sometimes we get a glimpse of moments where we see time open itself to eternity, so to speak. The unseen becomes seen, albeit for just a fleeting moment. For me, I can catch glimpses of this by the ocean on a clear day, when heaven and earth seem to meet. One day it will be this way, for us and for all eternity. For Augustine, eternity is where God abides and truth rules. It is both the foundation of all time and the place from which it is derived. Eternity should be the focus in our minds. It is therefore the God of eternity we need to continually seek and dwell upon. It is his thoughts that we need. As the Apostle Paul tells the Colossians in chapter 3 verse 2, Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. The maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, whom we confess week by week in the Nicene Creed, is the eternal one who both embraces and transcends time. Seen are the hands on our own clocks, unseen are the hands on God's clock. What may seem to be delayed may in fact be quick to God, Let that comfort you, and don't worry, you have all eternity to figure this out. In his confession, Augustine adds this for our comfort. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. So lead us by your Spirit, that in this life we may live to your glory, and in the life to come enjoy you forever 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.